Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at updating our rooted Pixel 3 or Pixel 3 XL to the Android 10 October update that was released yesterday. So to do that, uh, we still don't have an updated TWRP that supports all the new changes in Android 10. So we're going to have to do the good old Magisk Manager image patching as we usually do for or what we've done so far. And uh, we're going to use the factory images with this as well. If you do get an OTA update notification, you can try and take that. I'll leave additional instructions below uh, in case you wanna go through that way. Uh, but today we'll be using the factory images on camera here. So we need to start off by downloading a few things. So let's head over to our computer here. And the first thing you wanna download is the latest SDK platform tools. And these are just executables. Uh, they're called ADB and Fastboot, and there's a few other ones uh, inside this package. And basically we use those programs to communicate with our phone from our computer using the USB cable. So we want to download the one for your operating system. So I'm going to click on Windows, agree to the terms and conditions, and just save this zip file. Once you click on the blue download link, uh, just save it to uh, an appropriate place. Just put everything in one folder. And once you've downloaded that, let's download the latest factory image for our Pixel 3 or Pixel 3 XL. So on the right hand side, you can actually select which device you have and it'll jump to that location. So you just want to scroll down and download this one here, the latest one that has the October update. Click on the blue download link and also save that in the same location as the platform tools. Now here we are, we've got everything downloaded now. So let's go ahead and start extracting some stuff. So we're going to open up the platform tools zip file here. Now again, if you've already used this before, uh, you probably don't have to do this, but uh, in case you don't have the platform tools readily available, just extract the whole platform tools folder outside just like that and let that copy over. And then you can close this. And let's open up the uh, factory image as well and go inside this folder here. And what we want from here is the uh, bootloader image, the image zip file, and of course the radio image as well. So drag out those three files and wait for that to extract. Okay, so once those three files have extracted, we can close the factory image zip file and in here, we need to open up the image zip file, not to be confused with the factory image. So the one we just extracted, we wanna open that up and we wanna extract the boot image just like that into the Android folder. And then we can close the images zip file. And now what we need to do next is prepare a command prompt window to use. So let's open up the platform tools folder. And now this only applies to people who haven't added the platform tools folder into the path environment variable. Uh, we need to open up a command prompt window inside this folder. So the command prompt can locate the programs that we're gonna run as we update our phone. So to do this, we need to go up to the address bar up here and click on that. And with everything highlighted, just type in CMD, uh, short for command, and hit enter. And that'll bring up a command prompt window that's already changed the directory and the location to the platform tools. So we can actually run ADB and also we can run fastboot I can type properly. All right, so keep this handy just so you can use it. I'll be using my console emulator. Once you have the command prompt window opened to the platform tools directory and you can run those commands, ADB and fastboot, we can go back one folder into the Android folder where everything else is because we'll be needing uh, access to these files. And what we can do now is actually go to our device because we need to enable a few things or make sure they're enabled. Uh, so we can continue with the updating process. And the first thing is, uh, you want to disable any, I guess, potentially problematic modules. I know that the latest version of the Active Edge mod uh, for Pixel devices, so the one that changes the squeeze function, uh, that one has a built-in disable mechanism now, so you don't have to always disable that, but it's also good to keep that updated if that's possible. So update your modules, and you can see that a few of these have updates already for them. Uh, so you can update now before you update. Uh, usually if you wait one day, your modules get updated, especially ones that rely on uh, each and every update to kind of get the new files out of it. So the Active Edge mod is definitely one of those modules. Uh, so I'm gonna test out the theory here, or at least what they've told me. Uh, this should disable itself if it doesn't detect a correct version of Android. So, but it's good practice to disable those anyways, because um, because currently we actually don't have TWRP to help us remove modules like this. You'll need to go through a uh, you know, custom version of Magisk to 
enable core mode only by patching the boot image. So let's just disable that just for safekeeping. And we also want to enable the USB debugging. And if you haven't done that already, you need to go into the system and advance and developer options. And you need to scroll down to enable USB debugging. And if you don't have this developer options menu, you need to go to about phone, scroll down to the build number and tap this seven times until you, or it prompts you to enable it. And once you've enabled that, you can go back to system advanced and developer options. And of course, enable Oops, USB debugging. Now, once you've done that, uh, don't mind me revoking those authorizations. I'll show you uh, why I need to do that, just to show you something. So once you've done that, enabled USB debugging and disabled any problematic uh, Magisk modules, uh, you should reboot. I should say disable or update. So I could have updated that. Uh, just reboot your phone if you've disabled or changed your modules, just to make sure it takes effect. Uh, but if you've just enabled USB debugging, you don't have to restart your phone. But I'm going to wait for my phone to turn back on and we can go ahead with the updating process. Okie dokie, so our phone's booted back up and let's just quickly check Magisk Manager to make sure uh, the modules that we want disabled are disabled and that is good. And once you have that done, we need to copy one file to our phone here, which is the boot image that we extracted earlier. So let's head over back to our computer here and what we need to do is go into our command prompt and type in ADB devices. Now this will start up the ADB daemon and also you can see on our phone here it's asking for a, I guess, authorization prompt. Now it's important that you check always allow from this computer just to make things a bit more seamless and tap on allow. And you can see on the command prompt it said unauthorized before, but if we run the same command again, we should see our device connected as usual, which is good. So once we have confirmed that our device is connected, we can now push, oh sorry, uh, yeah, push the boot image to our phone's SD card, just so we don't have to mess around with MTP. I find that it's a little bit quicker, well, about the same time. So let's type in ADB push. We wanna push something to our phone, and when the first argument after push, so leave a space after that, is the boot image. Now, if you can't drag in a file like this, uh, what you can do is hold shift and right click on the file that you want to, I guess, send or use. And you can come down here just near the middle. It has copy as path as an option. Uh, you can select that and that'll copy the path of the file to the clipboard. And if you right click on the command prompt window, it should paste in the contents. So if you can't drag and drop, you'll have to do this. And once you've put in the boot image file, I need you to type in forward slash. So leave a space after the file type in forward slash SD card and forward slash and hit enter. And this will copy the boot image to your SD card. Now, once you've done that, we can go to Magisk Manager here. Very convenient since we're already there. So let me make that big again. And let's go over to Magisk, so the main menu. And you wanna make sure that the latest version of Magisk is at least 19.4. And that currently at the time of this video is in the beta channel. So if, you don't, if you're not on the beta channel already, which you should be if you're coming from Android 10 or the Canary channel, uh, you wanna go down to the settings of Magisk Manager, change the update channel to beta. You may have been on stable, uh, but if you're using the current a, um, Canary builds, you should be okay with that as well. So as long as you're on version 19.4 uh, or higher, you should be okay. So let's tap on install and tap on install here. And we're going to tap on select and patch a file, which is the second option. And here is where we want to browse for that uh, boot image that we just copied over. So to do that, we need to enable the internal storage. So tap on the three dots overflow menu. And if you need to tap on this uh, show internal storage, if you haven't done so already, then once you've done that, you can go over to your internal storage, scroll all the way down, and you should see the boot image that we copied over just then using A to B. So tap on that, and this will download Magisk and start to back up the stock boot image and this will also patch the stock boot image we just provided with Magisk. And this is for the upcoming update. So we're gonna preemptively do this uh, beforehand. And you can see that the output of our file is stored in the Magisk or as Magisk underscore patch dot IMG in the downloads folder. So let's head over back to our command prompt here. And we're going to pull that file from our phone uh, to our computer into the Android folder. Now let's type in ADB pull and now the location of the file that we want from our phone. So we can type in SD card forward slash 
and then type in download with a capital D, no S, and then type in magisk underscore patched dot img. And the, in the last argument here, we want to put it in the Android folder, which is the one or the parent of the platform tools folder, which we are currently in. So to do that, we need to type in two dots because two dots represents the parent directory. And if, as soon as we press enter, we should see the patched boot image appear in the Android folder. So if you enter and there we are. So you, you can see that's appeared in the correct place, which is fine. Uh, but if you don't see it, just have a look inside the platform tools folder. If you see the boot or the magisk patched image, you can take it out from there anyways. So all you need to do is retrieve the magisk underscore patched image. And then we can now go ahead with the updating process. So all we need to do is reboot our phone back in or into the bootloader. And to do that, uh, what we can do is tap and hold, well, hold the power button. And I'm going to tap on restart. Uh, but as soon as you tap on restart and the screen turns black or it freezes, I want you to hold the power, oh, sorry, the volume down button. So let's tap on restart and get ready to hold. So I'm holding the volume down button and that'll get us into the bootloader. Just give it a few moments here. It may take a little while, but keep holding it until your phone is in the bootloader. And we're in the bootloader now, which is good. So let's head over back to our computer, back into our command prompt here. And I want you to type in fastboot devices. And you can see our device's serial number has appeared in the fastboot mode, which is good. And let's start by flashing the latest bootloader image. So let's type in fastboot flash bootloader. Leave a space after the word bootloader and drag in the bootloader image. Now, if you can't drag it in, remember the shift and right click trick to copy the path of the file. I'll do that for the next one. So let's hit enter and that'll write the bootloader, the updated one. And for the new bootloader to take effect, we need to reboot our phone back into the bootloader. And we can do that by typing in fastboot space reboot space bootloader and hit enter. And once our phone is back into the bootloader, we should see that it's been updated. We need to do the same for the radio image. So let's type in fastboot flash radio, leave a space after radio, and I'm going to hold shift and right click on the radio image, uh, but you can drag it in. And I'm going to press copy as path and right click on the command prompt window. That's another way to do it. And I'm going to press enter. And that'll update the radio image on our phone or the radio partition. And we need to reboot our phone uh, back into the bootloader once more, just so we can, or it can take effect. So I'm going to press the up arrow key twice and we can type in fast boot reboot bootloader again and hit enter. Uh, this is so when we use the update command, it checks that we have the correct bootloader and radio slash baseband versions uh, before it starts updating. So it's important that we reboot into the bootloader after flashing those two, the critical partitions, so the bootloader and radio. And once we've done that, we can go with a big update uh, command here. So we can type in fast boot, double dash, and you need to type in skip dash reboot. Leave a space after that, type in the word update and drag in the image zip file, not the factory image and hit enter. Now, the reason why we use that skip reboot flag is because we don't want the phone automatically turning on uh, or just so we can try to get it back into the bootloader as quick as possible to reboot our phone using the uh, magisk patched image. Uh, this is so we don't have to kind of waste time with that and we can flash the uh, patched image right after it finishes updating. So your phone's going to reboot into fastboot D and then do the rest of the images. So I'm going to fast forward this until we are ready to uh, reroute our phone. And what we can do now is reboot our phone back into the bootloader. Um, I'm not too familiar with the fastboot D interface. So I just thought maybe we'll just take it back to the normal bootloader. So we can type in fastboot uh, reboot bootloader. Hit enter and our phone should do just that. And the last thing we need to do is flash the patched boot image that we got from Magisk Manager before. So we can do that by typing in fast boot, flash boot, leave a space after boot and drag in the boot image. Oops, that's the wrong one. Don't drag in that one, drag in the Magisk one and hit enter. And with everything good to go, we can now reboot our phone. I'm going to press or select start here on the phone and boom, we should be booting into Android soon enough with our phone rooted and on the October security update. Now, uh, there you can or you may end up in a boot loop here. 
And if that is so, it could be due to uh, potentially a module or a bad magisk install or just a variety of things. And if you can't boot up after flashing the uh, patched magisk in boot image, I recommend that you go back to the bootloader and flash the stock boot image, you know, the one we copied over to our phone to patch using magisk manager. Uh, we should just use that boot image, uh, flash it to our phone and our phone should boot up normally and try patching the boot image again using Magisk Manager. Sometimes things just require another restart or another go, so don't panic if your phone doesn't turn on, there's always a way to get out of it. Okay, our phone is up and running. Uh, it had me panicking a little bit, but that's all right. Isn't that fun? So let's wait for our phone to turn back on and it should say finishing system update. And we should also be on the October security update, which we are, and that is good. Let's have a look at Magisk Manager, just so we can see that everything is updated and ready to go. That is fantastic, that is good. Okay, so everything looks like it's working. Modules, uh, our modules. We'll probably need to update a few, so I'll probably go ahead and do that. And while we're at it, just wanna thank you guys for watching. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down below. I'll be more than happy to answer them and help you out. Or even better yet, join us on Discord. It's much easier to get your messages that way uh, because sometimes YouTube comments don't really appear and I lose track of conversations there. So uh, that is also good. And uh, if you need anything else, have a look at the description. I have a lot of links there. And as always, happy flashing.